things but on the sled, and we'll start for Captain Lodge. Lodge, stop watching TV Don't a you. second. Call Spinner. Yeah? We've got a special visitor. Spinner! Now, do you remember when I told you your daddy died in the POW camp? Well, this here is Captain Coons. He was in the POW camp with daddy. Hello, little man. Boy, I sure heard a bunch about you. See, I was a good friend of your dad's. We were in that Hanoi pit of hell together over five years. Hopefully, you'll never have to experience this yourself, but when two men are in a situation like me and your dad were for as long as we were, you take on certain responsibilities of the other. If it had been me who'd not made it, Major Coolidge, you'd be talking right now to my son, Jim, the way it turned out. Butch, I got something for you. This watch I got here was first purchased by your great-grandfather during the First World War. It was bought in a little general store in Knoxville, Tennessee, made by the first company to ever make wristwatches. Up till then, people just <laughs> carried pocket watches. It was bought by private doughboy Orion Coolidge on the day he set sail for Paris. This was your great-grandfather's war watch, and he wore it every day he was in that war. And, and he'd done his duty, went home to your great-grandmother, took the watch off, put an old coffee can, and in that can it stayed. Till your granddad, Dane Coolidge, was called upon by his country to go overseas and fight. The Germans, once again, it's time to call it World War II. Great-grandfather gave this watch to your granddad for good luck. Unfortunately, Dane's luck wasn't as good as his old man's. Dane was a Marine, and he was killed, along with all the other Marines at the Battle of Wake Island. Granddad was facing death. He knew it. None of those boys had any illusions, but they were leaving that island alive, so... Three days before the Japanese took the island, your granddad asked a gunner on an Air Force transport named a Wanaki, a man he'd never met before in his life, to deliver to his infant son, who he'd never seen in the flesh, his gold watch. Three days later, your granddad was dead, but Wanaki kept his word. After the war was over, he paid a visit to your grandmother, delivering to your infant father, his dad's gold watch. This watch. This watch was on your daddy's wrist when he was shot down on that Hanoi. He was captured, put in a Vietnamese prison camp. He knew that if the gooks ever saw the watch, it'd be confiscated, taken away. The way your dad looked at it, this watch, it was your birthright. You'd be damned if any slope's gonna put the greasy yellow hands on his boy's birthright. So he hid it. In one place he knew he could hide something, his ass. Five long years he wore this watch, up his ass. Then he died of dysentery. He'd give me the watch. I hid this uncomfortable hunk of metal up my ass, two years. Then, after seven years, I was sent home to my family. And 